So we're going to do a quick counterexample here. The thing with counterexamples, of course, is that we want the premises to be true and we want the conclusion to be false. This is the basic requirement of a counterexample because after all, it's this combination of premises to conclusion that shows that an argument is not valid. Now, the other thing that we need to make sure of with our counterexamples is the form of the ordinary language counterexample actually matches with the form of the original argument. Now, in chapter one, we were doing this ordinary language to ordinary language, and so that process was very slightly different. We were just trying to keep the original ordinary English language sentences and just replacing ordinary English phrases. Here, we're starting with the predicate logic as a general first step. I would recommend translating into the English. So first premise is some Fs are Gs. That'll help us make sure that we get the form right. And then the second premise is some Hs are not Gs. And then of course our conclusion is some Fs are not Gs. You don't always have to retran you don't always have to translate into ordinary language, but I find that it helps you get the form correctly. Now the second thing that I usually do is I start with the conclusion. Coming up with a false conclusion and then working backwards to true premises is just a little easier because otherwise uh, there's too many moving pieces. So maybe something like some dogs are not mammals. Now notice what we're doing with the forms here. So Fs is being replaced with the term dogs and G's is being replaced with mammals. Now for a counterexample to be successful, not only do the premises have to be true and the conclusion obviously false, but the form has to stay the same. So anywhere there's an F, we're going to want to make sure we've got dogs and anywhere there's a G, we're going to want to make sure that we write in mammals. Notice how I've not changed any quantifiers and I've not changed any other logical operators, right? I've just put in dogs wherever Fs was and mammals wherever Gs was. Now, we don't have a replacement yet for H and this is the other requirement is that our premises that we find obviously true premises. Some dogs are mammals is obviously true. And so now the only, you know, our, our goal is just to find something that's going to make that second premise true as well. So maybe something like some um, frogs are not mammals. Again, that's true. And so here then our counterexample is that some dogs are mammals. That's an exact match for the form of premise one. Some frogs are not mammals. That's an exact match for premise number two. And they're both obviously true. And then therefore some dogs are not mammals. That's obviously false, but that's also an exact match for the conclusion. And again, this shows that this argument isn't valid because the definition of validity is that it's not possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. What I've done with this counterexample is shown how it is possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. Precisely, it's possible under these substitutions. Now, looking forward, the thing to watch out for with counterexamples is just, again, make sure that the form of the ordinary language counterexample is an exact match for the predicate logic. And you can color code or use any method that you were using before, but you want to make sure that there's no, you know, you're not switching the position of one of the predicates. Now uh, we still have two true premises and a false conclusion, but this argument is no longer a counterexample for the given argument because the second premise has a different form now. And then just as a big picture comment, counterexamples do always work, but they are really difficult and just trickier to come up with as the arguments get more complicated. Typically you will only see uh, you will only see the counterexample method used in arguments that are relatively simple like this one, arguments that use standard form generalizations because those that's generally how we talk in ordinary language. And so again, there are only 10 practice problems in the textbook, but that is a basically all you need, you know, we're going to be applying the counterexample method to fairly simple arguments like this. It does require knowledge of the predicate logic. It does require also being able to translate or read predicate logic, and then also just understanding the basic concept of counterexample. Same form, but true premises and a false conclusion.